John Sterling, voice of the Yankees with Armin and LeVac on 104.5, the team. LeVac is out today. I'm riding solo. And, John, it's the first day off the Yankees uh, have had in a while, of course, aside from the All-Star break. Uh, have, are you enjoying your day off thus far? How's it going for you? Well, I'm enjoying it immensely and even more so now that I'm chatting with you. So. <laughs> I don't know about good, that. <laughs> good day off. I don't know about that. Now, Robinson Cano uh, enjoyed his Saturday at uh, Yankee Stadium hitting two home runs. John, has there ever been a former Yankee who has come in and gotten more boos than he did? Is is there a guy that who is the who is the most hated former Yankee that that you've ever heard that's coming to Yankee Stadium? You know, you raise a good question. I can't think of one, and um, it's wrong for them to boo Robbie. I mean, they. You know, people can do what they want, but I mean, he <clears throat> he took a tremendous amount of money. I mean, who would turn that money down? So, yeah, I'm not much for uh, in this hypocrisy. You know, the Yankees stole a lot of players from other teams by spending money. So Seattle stole one from the Yankees. So, but anyway, that's what they do. And um, <clears throat> I really like him as a person, and he's gee, he's a terrific player, and he's had a slow start, but. I think the second half will have pretty good numbers. John Sterling, voice of the Yankees with Armin and Levac on 104.5, the team. And, John, one of my theories is that Yankee fans are a little upset maybe because the Yankees still haven't found that solid replacement at second base. Most recently, they've tried Steven Drew. He's not the long-term answer. Ref Snyder, maybe. We don't know yet. But maybe the uncertainty at second base and who that face will be uh, rattles Yankees fans a little bit. Well, it could be because they miss him so much. I mean, it's very rare to have a second baseman uh, who can hit like that and and drive the ball out of the ballpark as well as hit line drives everywhere and also be that good a defensive player because Cano is a tremendous defensive second baseman. And anyway, that's that's how life is, and he'll be booed when he comes in next year, I'm sure, as well. John, what did you make out of Ref Snyder's four starts in a row that he just had before getting sent back down? Well, I didn't make uh, much of it. You know, I know this is Major League Baseball, and uh, unfortunately in New York, every <laughs> every at-bat, every game is evaluated. Um, in, in baseball, you couldn't evaluate Ruff Snyder properly um, if he had 100 at-bats. And so um, it, his time was too short. Uh, I love what he did in Boston in that game where he had the single and the two-run home run that, that won a game for the Yankees. And he did nothing wrong in the field, so um, you know we uh, this this evaluation process that goes on pitch by pitch is um, is silly. Baseball's not played that way. I noticed that um, one day after A Rod had a big day, he struck out like three times, and so there was an article entitled "Hero to Zero. I I'm sorry, that's not baseball. Uh, everyone who's ever played baseball will go four for four on a Tuesday and go for four on a Wednesday. I mean, that's that's the game. And now I know they know the game. They're just trying to look for ways to sell newspapers. I got it. Uh, or talk shows. I, I got it. But that's not baseball. Now, baseball, you have to look at percentages over a long time. I mean, here the Yankees have a four-game lead. You know, they haven't won anything. I mean, they have 70-odd oh, games to go. So, um you can't. This is not football, and people try to evaluate baseball as football, and it's completely wrong. John Sterling, voice of the Yankees, with Armin and Levac on your home for Yankees baseball, one hundred four five. The team, John, you mentioned the Yankees have a four game lead. Buster only told us uh, last week that the Yankees don't have any glaring weakness from position to position. Would you feel like this is one of the more complete Yankee teams that you have seen in recent years? Uh. Well, it depends what your your term of recent years. Uh, three years ago, two seasons back, they were very injured and had a team that absolutely could not hit. <laughs> and um, and then they didn't hit last year the way they should after they had signed up Ellsbury and McCann and Beltron. And so I thought Joe Girardi um, did a phenomenal job both years in keeping the team over five hundred. And um, uh, this year, the team has gotten back to hitting the way Yankees hit. And they have built up, Cashman did, a tremendous bullpen. And uh, so they have the uh, they have five guys in the bullpen that I really like. That's a lot of guys. 
And at the end, Betances and Miller are, are fabulous. Starting pitching has been very inconsistent. It needs to be more consistent. Uh, they're hitting home runs and scoring runs. And um, I think they would have a very well-rounded team if Headley and Beltron had big second halves uh, to go along with the table setters, Ellsbury and Gardner, and the big three in the middle, McCann, uh, to share and A-Rod. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good team. Pretty good team. Uh, if the starting pitching was a little more consistent, um, I would think they would actually win the East. Now, John, uh, Brian Cashman today said that it's a strong possibility that they do not make a trade before the deadline because of what's out there and having to give up a minor league guy for a, for a starting pitcher. Do, do the Yankees still make the playoffs? Are they a playoff contender if they're not able to get a trade done here? Yeah, there'll be moves. Um, you know, There are moves that you can make uh, off waivers, although they're in first place, so they get the last crack at it. Um, I also don't think they'll make a big move. Um, but, you know, you can't believe what general managers say. I mean, they never <laughs> are going to, they're never going to show their whole cards. I mean, that would be silly if they did. Um, but the, if you're talking about Hamels, I don't know, the other big Qu- pitches. Quato, out there. Quato's um, out there, too. He certainly, excuse me? Johnny Quato's out there as well. Oh, yeah. Quato and Hamels, there are two. First of all, National League pitchers sometimes don't do well in the American League. Right. And um, and if if they're talking about, which they will, about Severino, Judge, Bird, and Gary Sanchez, um, players like that, I don't think the Yankees are going to give them up. Right. You know how they could give them up? And this happens a lot. They could give them up if they know that they're selling players who they don't think are really going to be major league stars. Uh, teams do that all the time. Oh, they build up their prospects, and they keep repeating their names, and the names that Boston does is great. Uh, the Dodgers, certainly in the old days, did that great. So um, you have to scout yourself, and they have to scout, and whether they think those guys I mentioned are going to be major league stars. And um, you know, I don't scout them. I don't see them play on a daily basis. And... Um, but I, I'd like to believe them, and if I believe them, then they shouldn't be traded. It sure seems like at this point, Brian Cashman just finds a way to get a deal done when it's needed. Do, do you feel that way after the years that that you've spent? You know, obviously following and following him very closely. I think um, Brian is exceedingly bright, and I don't think he will make a move that will hurt the team. Look, you never make a move that you think is going to hurt the team. <laughs> you know, you make a move that you think will will help them. I don't think if those guys, I, mean, I just mentioned it, if those guys are as good as they say they are, then I uh, I certainly wouldn't trade them. And I think after what Severino has done, um, I don't think, uh, I think he'll be in the Bronx. You know, I, I really expect him to come up at some point because he, he did well at, at AA. If Severino did so well at AA, he was moved to AAA. Well, his ERA is under two in AAA. And so uh, I would think you'd see Severino at some point. The others may take another year because they're position players. But um, if, if, in fact, they are as good as we've been led to believe, I would hold on to them. I wouldn't trade them. Also, when you're trading for those guys, those guys are going to be free agents. So that's called rent a player. You only have them for the rest of the year. Right. John Sterling, voice of the Yankees with Armin and Levac. John, CC Sabathia yesterday only gives up one run. Uh, just a great performance, two in a row now after getting his knee drained. How much should we make? How much should we commend CC for playing the best he's played all year after clearly he's not 100%, is he? Well, he certainly looks it. Um, I'm the wrong one to ask because I'm a big CC fan. Yeah. Um, I like him personally and professionally. He's such a great competitor. And I believe that he can pitch well um, as a Yankee starter just the way he's pitching. Um, He's throwing hard enough. Uh, He knows how to pitch. He has um, the secondary pitches. And he has been hurt by missing in the middle of the plate. And if he, you know, stays out of the middle, um, he can be a winning pitcher. And also one more thing. They talk about length and distance and yada, yada, yada. Um, if Sabathia pitches six innings with this bullpen, just like he did yesterday, I, I would think um, 
so that he can win the majority. Of, you know what you're asking these guys to do is pitch well three out of four times. And that's not just CC, but it's Pineda and Tanaka and Avaldi and Nova. And they have all they have to do. That's not all. I should, what they have to do is keep the game the team in the game. Uh, yesterday, CC did it against Felix Hernandez. And um, when you have those five guys in vacuum in the bullpen, you know, then you're really good from the seventh inning on and maybe part of the sixth inning on. So I think it's very conceivable that CC will be a contributing factor for the Yankees in the second half of the year. John, Didi Gregorius in the first half of the year was critiqued for, is the spotlight too big? How much of an adjustment time does he need? Does he need? He's playing better now in the second half of the season. Do you see a difference in him? I mean, being around yes. him, you do, okay. I see a difference in that he's much more confident both in the, in the field and at plate. And uh, you can see that he's making all the plays in the field. And he was rushing too much at the beginning. He's trying to do too much. And he made a lot of errors or a very lot of poor plays. And now he's um, his defense has been excellent. And he is really starting to sting the ball. And so I think that's all confidence. And, you know, there's a guy. He's, a, he's young. He, he barely played in the majors. And there's a guy who can only get better. So um, I like what I see of Dee very, very much. John, which team in the AL East scares you the most for the Yankees? Baltimore. Why is that? They're the, because they're the most rounded team. Uh, they have pretty good starting pitching. They have a very good bullpen. They have great power. And they have a very good infield defense. And um, and they have a great manager in, in Buck Showalter. And I would say they, they're the, going to be the toughest team. Uh, Toronto, you know all about them. They have tremendous power, and they score. I've never remembered a year where the number one team had so many more more runs than the number two team. I mean, that's how much Toronto scores. Uh, obviously, they have pitching problems. Uh, Tampa is the reverse. They don't hit, and they have a, a very good pitching that's coming back. You know, they're getting all these injured pitches back. Uh, Matt Moore and Odorizzi. And their pitching is terrific, but they don't do a lot. They don't have a great hitting team. You can pitch to them. And so that's four teams. And Boston, you know, they're kind of an enigma. I don't think Boston is going to become a terrific team this year because I don't think they throw out enough great starting pitching. And um, they're going to hit better. You know, all their guys are going to get into it in the hot summer months. You know, the pitching wears down and the ball travels further and all that jazz. They, if they were healthy, they'd have a very good hitting team, and they have a very good back end of the bullpen. I don't think their starters are strong enough. So if I had to gauge it, I would say Baltimore will be by far the toughest opposition for the Yanks down the – it's not down the stretch yet. You know, it would be much better, Armin, if you asked me this question a month from today as right. we're starting to head into, into September. Uh, but right now I think Baltimore will be the toughest team. John Serling, longtime voice of the Yankees. John, it's funny. I born and raised in Dallas. I am, and uh, born and raised Rangers fan. And yesterday, I hear you do the play by play of uh, Nelson Cruz. You said make making a great catch, and my heart just sank because immediately in my head, of course, I think of the World <laughs> Series. And then Susan right. says, "I can't help but think of our friend Eric Nadell, the voice of the Rangers, saying if he would have just done that in the World Series, I wanted to drive off the road. I, I'm still not over it, John. I'm really not." Well, the funny thing is, is, it was really the same ball. Yeah. It was a high, hard line drive to right field, and Cruz went back, and when David Freeze hit it, he misjudged it or went off his glove. I honestly, you know, I remember seeing it. But yeah, I, straight over his Yesterday, head. Um, he went back, and that was a big catch at the time because the game was tied at one. That was to be a leadoff double, and he made a heck of a catch. All right, John Serling, voice of the Yankees. John, thanks so much for joining us uh, on your day off. Great catching up with you, and I'm sure we'll, we'll bug you again in the future. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Take care now.